John, examine games on CD rack. You've put countless man hours into this assortment of quality titles. John, read Colonel Sassaker's daunting text. You decide to consult with the Colonel's bottomless wisdom. Good grief, this thing is huge kill a cat if you dropped it. But really, to dig into this hefty book, you will have to catalog it. You are not sure you are ready to log jam your other artifacts beneath it just yet. John, catalog fake arm skin. What did you just say? You don't want to clog up your... Ah, oh, Jesus. In a momentary lap of concentration, you accidentally catalog the arms again. John, ses set pester chum status to bully. You don't think the situation is quite dire enough to go all the way to rancorous, but you still feel the pester chum client should reflect your mood change in some way. Bully will have to do, you guess. This unsurprisingly does nothing whatsoever. Oh right, you forgot your chum is still pestering you. John, answer chum. Is it there? Please say yes. Maybe you can play with TT. She's been pestering me all day about it. She's macking on me so hard all the time, I start to feel embarrassed for her. I mean, not that I can blame her or anything. Yes, it is understandable, because you are really attractive. I am attracted to you. Thank you. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, I, I don't have it yet. My dad has the mail, and I guess I have to get it from him and see if it's there. And uh, I've been busy spending all afternoon shitting around with my stupid Celadex. So frustrating. And what's your motives? What? How do you retrieve artifacts from it? Oh, like, one at a time, I guess? And if I put too much in, something falls out. Stack? <laughs> what is yours? Hash map. My bro taught me a few tricks. He bows basically everything and is awesome. The hell is that? Uh, you should probably brush up on your data structures. I guess. It could free up a card for you. Wait, hold up. We skipped. Did you at least allocate your strife, Specibus? No. Could free up a card for you. And plus, let like, you attack stuff whenever things get too hot to handle. Which is never. What have you got? Well, I've got a hammer, but it's trapped under some arms. Wow, you really suck at this, don't you? Just get rid of the arms and then allocate the hammer to the Specibus. How? I don't know, just use the arms on any old thing and see if it works. John, combine fake arms with cake. You stick the fake arms in the cake on your bed. This definitely makes the cake at least 300% more hilarious. You're sure Colonel Sassaker would know the precise index of elevated hilarity. John, allocate hammer to strife specifics. You check the back of your strife specibus for the kind of stratus you have in mind for it. John, select hammer. Your strife specibus has been allocated with the hammer kind of stratus. The hammer has been moved from your patchalog deck to your strife deck. John, report progress to TG. Okay, I did it. Hammer kind? Okay, that will be the permanent allocation for your stri for your specibus. I guess I should have mentioned that. Uh, hope you like hammers, dude. Yeah, that's fine, I guess. I can't imagine it's going to be all that relevant. John, Capatulog Colonel's Big Book. Now that you've got some space in your Silidex to work with, you figure you might as well start squandering it immediately. Ordinarily, this ridiculous book would be way too heavy to carry around in any practical way. You guess maybe this is one respect in which the cards present some convenience. John, examine GameBro magazine.
game, bro. Spur. Why the game of the year, whatever, isn't as good as some other stuff I like that's better. John, read article. So, okay. Superb is this game that a lot of cats seem hella pumped of, and this beta is sitting on my desk for review, so I'm like, yeah man, I'll write something. But, I don't know, I'm like, so, this is about houses or some noise? That's fine. I'm sure that's like fucking dynamite in a handbag for some brosefs, but all I'm saying is, when do you get to thrash anything? Like, while you're playing house or some shit, are you ever in jeopardy of getting mud on your doll's dress or whatever from busting out, and I quote, the mad stunts all wicked up ins? Know what I'm saying, bro, yo ma? I don't actually play this game, but I gave it 1.5 hats out of 5 hats to keep it real. At this point, I'd like to give a shout out to my boy Dennis, who was over the other day. We're gonna chill in front of the Dark Knight, and he was so psyched of it all, y'all. So, this one time he was leaning against the screen door, and that shit popped open, and the back deck was wet, and he slipped down the steps and broke his thumb on the lawn. It wasn't a long fall, but hey, I guess a thumb bone wasn't made for supporting the brunt of a huge useless tool against wet grass. Never did watch Dark Knight on account of Ron trucking his balling candy ass girth to the hospital. But it's cool. I still got no another watch in me, Bro 12, Rhonda. Bro notes. Dennis was so wasted. <laughs> I mean, damn. John. Capatulog, Game Bro. It might come in handy if you ever need something that burns easily. John. Capatulog, Magician's Hat. You expend your final card on the Magician's Hat. John. Get funny glasses, too. You don't have a free card in your Silidex. However, you were able to merge the Beagle Puss with the Magician's Hat to create a clever disguise. John, wear disguise to fool Dad. John? Who is this John you speak of? You are quite certain there has never been, nor ever will be. Yeah, this is a really shitty disguise. While you are wearing the items, they remain on the card, but it is temporarily removed from the deck, thus freeing up the card beneath it. Cards beneath it. John, leave room. You exit into the hallway. On one hall, wall hall, on, on, on one wall hangs a picture of a fella who sure knows how to have a laugh. A man after your own heart. You always thought he looked a lot like Michael Sarah. But your dad swears on the many howled tomes of Egypt that it is not. You're not sure about that, though. On the other wall is one of your dad's stupid clowns, or harlequins, as he is quick to correct anyone who would venture such brazen assumption. John, go downstairs. The accursed odor of fresh baking wafts into your newfound nostrils. Something is brewing in the kitchen. It must be the connivings of your arch nemesis, Betty Crocker. The rich, buttery aroma of her plot stinks to high heaven. Hmm. C Crocker? This mission is going to be more difficult than you imagined. Is this actually linked to anything? <laughs> what? Hold up. Oh, it's it's the Wikipedia page to Betty. It's the Betty Crocker. Wiki okay, cool. Thanks. Um, John, admire Harlequins. Oh no. You check out the shelves of. <laughs> <laughs> hold up. Hold up. Betty Crocker's coming in, folks. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Betty Crocker is a brand and fictional character used in advertising campaigns for food and recipes. The character was originally created. No one gives a shit. <laughs> you check out the shelves of fanciful Harlequins. Look at this fucking garbage. You hate this stuff. Funny is funny, but your dad sure can be a real cornball. 
Sometimes at night you pray for burglars. John, examine the fireplace. A bright orange flame flickers in the fireplace. It doesn't matter that it's April and not terribly chilly outside. In a home, a fireplace needs a fire, because that's what a fireplace is for. A fire belongs in a fireplace, damn it. Categorically, at all times, without exception. As a domestic myth of uncountable origin holds, a home borrows the spirit of the flame for as long as it makes a guest of it, much as the moon takes liberty with the sun's rays. The moon's an errant thief, and her pale fire she snatches from the sun. Mark Twain. You were almost certain Mark Twain said that. John, toss game bro into fire. It doesn't burn as quickly as you hoped. Each game bro magazine is guaranteed to be printed on 40% recycled asbestos for big ups to Mother Earth, yo. John, fondly regard cremation. You examine the sacred urn containing your departed Nana's ashes. When your father gives her portrait a wistful glance now and then, you can tell it brings back painful memories. A tall bookshelf. A ladder. An unabridged Colonel Sassacres. He never wants to talk about it. John. Topple urn. You comely mishandle the sacred urn. Ash is everywhere. In retrospect, Upon mulling cinematic tropes regarding ash-filled urns, this outcome was a virtual certainty. You'd probably better clean it up before Dad finds it. John, combine Father's pipe with clever disguise. You think now would be a good time to beef up your clever disguise. John, examine oversized gift. Champ, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. I believe in you. Contemplating what could be inside this package is sort of exciting, but it makes you a little nervous at the same time. John, open large present. Oh, hell no. John, capatulog ashes. First, you prop the Harlequin doll up on the couch, Having it in the middle of the floor sprawled out all akimbo like that struck you as unseemly. You catalog the ashes to your available card. John, combine ashes with urn. You merge the sacred urn with the ashes. Most of the ash is back in the urn, but it's a total mess. Really, it probably would have been tighter if you just used a broom and a dustpan. John, put urn back. No one will be the wiser except for maybe people with eyes. John, go get fake arms again. You just got another brilliant idea for doing some, for something to do with those pointless arms. You pry them out of the cake and capatulog them. Looks like Pester Chum is acting up again. John, examine third and fourth walls of room. John, check Pester Chum. Another one of your chums is messaging you. John, check message. I understand you have recently come into possession of the beta release of the Game of the Year, as featured in respectable periodicals such as Game Bro Magazine. That's an ugly rumor. Whoever told you that is a filthy liar, and you should probably stop hitting him on him all the time, or whatever. I can't control myself. I must have a weakness for insufferable pricks. Anyway, I still haven't checked the mail. My dad has it. I'm trying to get it from him, so BRB. John? What? You're wearing one of your disguises now, aren't you? You are typing to me right now while wearing something ridiculous. <laughs> no, why would you even think that? That's so stupid. Okay. Why don't you go get the game from your father? Alright, wish me luck. Oh, uh, B2W. Just kidding, I was wearing a funny disguise this whole time. Gotcha! <laughs> I know, John. John, go back downstairs. 
You can now execute the brilliant idea you had. There should be just enough frosting on the fake arms to serve as an adequate adhesive. John, attach arms to doll. <laughs> you don't care what Colonel Sasker says. That makes it at least a million percent funnier. John, inspect burnt paper on the floor. You put this back in the fire where it belongs. Throw present wrap in fire. As long as you're cleaning up. John, catch-a-log doll. You can carry hefty items, but that thing is just way too big. Get real. Besides, you don't even want it. John, read Colonel Sassaker's text. You thought about consulting the text to determine exactly how hilarious the doll is now. But this text is way too big to navigate in a timely fashion. You decide to forget it. John, find Dad and retrieve mail. The door on the left leads to the kitchen, from which the smell of baking wafts, a powerful aroma which could lift an especially porchly hobo off his feet. The door on the right leads to the study where your dad spends a lot of time. He could be in either room. Where will you go? John, go in the study. It doesn't look like he's in here right now. John, examine father's death. On the desk is a deck of playing cards, one of your dad's pipes, the April issue of the Serious Jester magazine, and a stray Capachalog card. There's also a can of peanuts on the desk. Haha, ha, oh dad, you won't be falling for that one again anytime soon. A severe peanut allergy is a terrible affliction to cope with. John, upgrade costume with hat from Hat Rack. You swap the magician's hat with the bowler hat. This disguise is somewhat less funny, but a lot more distinguished looking. John, combine second pipe with clever disguise. Your dad maintains numerous pipes around the household. A father without a pipe is like a strapping roughneck without a toothpick. That is to say, he is a rather piss-poor excuse for a roughneck, if you ask me. You'd rather not take the pipe, though. The first one tastes bad enough as it is. How you suffer for your comedy. John. Examine Capachalot card. Yes! This will be perfect for expanding the space in your Scylla! John. Capachalog, Capachalog card. Ugh! John, play 52 pickup. You play the prankster's favorite card game, even though you were alone in the room, thus rendering it an especially foolish version of solitaire. So stupid. Look at this mess. The peanut gallery over there is sure getting a kick out of it. You are allergic to their scorn. John, attempt to leave the house. You go back into the living room and contemplate checking the mailbox outside. You think perhaps you should exhaust all possibilities before plunging headlong into a dad encounter. Your television is currently airing a commercial. John, exit. You exit the house. John, check mail. Predictably, the mailbox is empty. 
You have already been scooped by your father. The streets are empty. Wind skims the voids, keeping neighbors apart, as if grazing the hollow of a cut reed, or, say, a plundered mailbox. A familiar note is produced. It's the one desolation plays to keep its instrument in tune. It is your thirteenth birthday, and with all twelve preceding it, something feels missing from your life. The game presently eluding you is the only latest sleight of hand in the repertoire of an unseen riddler, one to engender a sense not of mirth, but of lack. His coarse schemes are those less of a prankster than a common pickpocket. His riddle is absence itself. It is a mystery dispersing altogether, like the moon's faint reflection, with even one pebble of inquiry dropped in its black well. It is the most diabolical riddle of all. Absence diminishes little passions and increases great ones, as wind distinguishes candles and fans a fire. Walt Whitman. Yes, you are certain Walt Whitman said that. 100% positive. You have a feeling it's going to be a long day. John, leave a surprise for the mailman. No. See if your father left the mail in the car. The door is locked and your dad has the car keys. You peer in through the driver's side window. You don't see any mail, but you do see a green package. There is also something underneath it that looks like a slip of paper. Could these items have come in the mail? You don't see anything else that's usually in the mail, like bills and coupons. Maybe your dad forgot to take this stuff inside. John, spy in the kitchen. You try to get a gander through the kitchen window, but you can't see a whole lot. Seems your dad has been doing so much baking, the glass is steamed up. God, he is so weird. You can see what's on the table just beyond the window. Looks like the mail is there. Included among it is a red package, some bills, your dad's PDA, and an envelope that appears to be suspiciously labeled with the Suburb logo. Could it be? Unfortunately, the window is locked. John, go back into the kitchen. You have no other choice. You are going in. Clever disguise, it's time to work your magic. Oh, hold up. Put it there. Uh, somewhere, somewhere. I figured out. Sorry, recording device. You have been accidentally dropped. Accidentally. Yes, of course. These video games and this. Perhaps, in theory, should be able to fit right in here. This little box compartment. Perfect. Ha ta ta. Oh, this is. Oh, no, it doesn't exact. Well, okay. We. A proc. Hmm. <laughs> well, uh. Close enough. Close enough. Okay. Ha ta ta. There we go. Um. Let's just. Let's get this over with. Your dad sees right through your costume. You don't know what you're even thinking with this foolish ruse. You unequip the clever disguise. Your dad wheels a dreaded artifact of confection. He stands between you and the mail. There is only one way to settle this. Strife! Aggrieve! Auto pastry. Abjure. 
Aggrieve! What a hearty cake! John, retrieve the package and flee to your room. You cannot abscond. This pesky guardian is blocking your path. You will need to engineer some sort of distraction. And now he brandishes yet another artifact of confection. The man is ruthless. You better brace for impact in the most comedically striking fashion possible. John, equip disguise for defense. The Beagle Aegis absorbs the brunt of the street. Looks like your dad will enjoy the prankster's gambit on that exchange. As is usually the case. John, Capachalog Pie Tin. You take the Pie Tin and unequip the Beagle Pus. Everything in your Solidex is pushed back a card. The smoke pellets are ejected from the deck. Yes, this could be just the distraction you were. Nothing happens. What a huge letdown. John, take the cake. When two great forces oppose each other, the victory will go to the one that knows how to yield. Oscar Wilde. Wise words by a man who likely could resist everything but temptation. The cake forces, forces Colonel Sasker's text out of your Silidex. Sassacre, you beautiful bastard! Now's your chance, John. Abscond. Now that your dad is busy placating the smoke detector, you can snafely sneak away. John, take PDA. You snag your dad's PDA. Maybe later you'll switch the background image to something hilarious as a prank. Besides, it may come in handy later. You spare Capachalog card... Your spare Capachalog card is forced out of the Silidex and consequently integrated with the deck. You now have five cards to work with. John, take package. This red package is addressed to you. John, take envelope. You got the suburb, Beta! Exit kitchen. Get cake on couch. You capachalog the cake on the couch, expelling the pie tin from the bottom card. John, combine the cakes to make a double decker cake. You then merge the two cakes across all five cards. Everything in your Silidex is smushed between the cakes. Why don't you think these things through first? John, retreat upstairs. You pause at the juncture and head down the hall. You are going to need something to clean up this mess you are about to make by dissecting this cake. To the left is the bathroom. To the right is your dad's room. It is locked, and you are forbidden from ever entering. He has secrets. John, go to bathroom and grab a towel. You enter the bathroom. You can see your backyard from the window. The jewel in its crown is the swing set which has provided you with years of joy. There is also a spring-mounted pogo ride, which has been responsible for more than one painful injury, and has provided you with years of lament. On the sink is your dad's razor. On the rack to the side is a fresh towel. John, remove PDA, envelope, and package from cake. You take the razor and use it to perform surgery on the cake. You take the towel and clean off the extracted goods. John, retrieve your items. The items force the manhandled cake into the toilet. And just like that, your Silidex is full again. God, this thing is annoying. John, go to bedroom. Admire failure to launch poster. You're not usually into chick flicks, but Matthew McConaughey's cool charisma could salvage any heap of smoldering wreckage. This is your McConaughey wall, a casual shrine to an amazing actor. The film above that one is a lot better, you think. Can you see her? I want you to picture that little girl. <laughs> now imagine she's white. You got us, Matthew. Your smooth talking exposed our latent racism. Damn, you are good. John, check Pester Chum. Hi, 
happy birthday, John! Hello? Okay, I will talk to you later! Hey, Gigi is looking for you. Why are you even so popular all of a sudden? Is today some sort of special occasion or something? Did you get something- did you do something to curry favor with the ladies? Did you break your leg on a puppy or some shit? Dude, what are you doing? I discovered a comet that is going to destroy the Earth, and it was named after me. Now I am famous, and everyone wants to talk to me a lot. No, stop, just- no. Don't talk about your awful, stupid movies or make references to them. Your gross man-bro crush on Matt McConaughey is an unsavory thing to hold. McConaughey. Sounds like a noise a horse would make. I.e. dumb. Equally dumb are all those pictures of that clown you've got hanging up. Those are my dad's. I was talking about Nick Cage. Oh, what? No, man. Cage is sweet. So sweet. <laughs> so lame. You don't even like him ironically or anything. This is, like, for real, isn't it? <laughs> I do things ironically sometimes. What about what I sent you for your birthday? No, those are awesome. What? No, they're stupid. Which was the joke. The ironic joke. Get it? Wait, you're actually wearing them, aren't you? I'm wearing them ironically. Because they're awesome. The fact that they're ironic makes them awesome, and vice versa. Are you taking notes on how to be cool? Jesus, get a fucking pen. You do realize they touch Stiller's weird, sort of gaunt face at some point. You, yeah, uh, well, anyway, speaking of which, did you get the mail? Yeah. Did there happen to be a package there? Yeah, there's a big red one. You should probably open it. I would, but it's trapped under the spur beta, so I will probably open it after I install the beta. Oh man, the beta came? Yeah, wanna play it? <laughs> no way. Why not? It sounds so hell's a boring just to get TT to play it. She is all about that. Where'd she go? Nah, her and her is blinking in and out, I guess. Probably be back online soon. Oh, and Christ in a sidecar. Are you still using the stack modus? Seriously, dude, you need to bone up on your data structures. That shit is just ridiculous. Okay, I will. John, open browser and go to mspaintadventures.com. You decide to space out on the computer for a while before doing anything important. You open the typhiest web browser and direct it to what is indisputably the most amazing website ever created. The new adventure is okay but you're not sure if you like it as much as the last one. Install the Spur beta. You decide it's time for less meta and more beta. You insert the CD and install the Spur beta. What the fuck is this? John. Bone up on data structures. You go to your closet where you keep a lot of clothes and an array of handy computer programming guides. John, read data structures book. Data structures for assholes! Your ignorance just made me throw up a little. Get a clue, you computer illiterate piece of shit! Free fetch modus in back! You're not sure you really want to dig into this huge tome. It looks really boring, and kind of ornery. Maybe you'll just check out that free modus instead. John, get free fetch modus. Oh, oops. <laughs> you turn to the back inside cover where a free fetch modus is included in a plastic sleeve. This one is dictated by the logic of a queue data structure, operating on a first-in, first-out method, rather than a first-in, last-out method of a stack. John, apply modus, fetch modus to Silidex. Items capatchalogued in your Silidex are no longer immediately accessible. You can only use the item on the bottom card and must wait for items on upper cards to be pushed back to it. For instance, the red package is now inaccessible. You can only use the razor at the moment. 
This bonus doesn't strike you as a significant upgrade to your previous one. In fact, it almost seems more inconvenient. You figure you might as well give it a chance, though. John, switch back to stack modus. You suddenly wonder if this is even possible. You don't even remember if you ever had a physical card for the stack modus. You find this all to be a little abstract, and you prefer not to think about it too much. John, put down the razor. Put it... down? You're not quite sure you understand. John, pick up two items. You could patch along one of the cakes. You finally found a use for all these loitering pastries. Dead weight. John, get other cake. The second cake causes the razor to launch out of the front of your Silidex. Oh, good lord. That beautiful face. You wish the razor would have failed to launch. John, get more stuff. You open your magic chest and can patch along one of your favorite books of all time. Wise Guy by Mike Capney. There goes the fresh towel. John, might as well grab those cuffs. You take the trick handcuffs, expelling the PDA like a bullet. Oh, God damn it. John, open up that package. From EB. No, to EB. From TG. You examine the package. It is from one of your internet chums. It's bound in a packing tape, though. You'll need something sharp to open it. Ah, of course. The razor. It's all so simple. You wonder why you didn't... John, get razor. Pick up the package again. Let's take this from the top. John, capatulog glass shards. You take three glass shards in quick succession and duck for cover. Your Silidex rains devastation on your room from above. Now that your cards are packed with glass, you probably don't want to do that again anytime soon. You should probably go get that stuff before you forget. John, use the razor on the red package. You open the package. There is something suspicious inside. Something suspiciously dirty and smelly. It is a stuffed bunny, much like the one held hostage briefly by Malkovich Cyrus the Virus while taunting hard luck protagonist Cameron Poe, and starkingly similar to the one scooped up from the soot of a burning Vegas strip by Cage Poe's Cage's Poe and offered to his daughter, a gesture of symbolic of a tattered exterior surrounding a heart of gold. Poe wasn't much to look at, but he was a good man. But no, it is not merely like that bunny. According to this note of authenticity, it is the very same bunny. That is so awesome. This is amazing. John, check status of Spurb Beta. It looks like your computer is trying to get your attention. John, look at monitor. John, check Pester Chum window. It looks like you managed to retrieve the beta. Excellent. I'm going to try to connect. Whoa, okay, but I, I just got the most awesome present. The rabbit? So sweet! I've heard tales of this wretched creature often. Its Homeric legend is practically ensconced in the fold of my personal mythology by now. <laughs> what? Why don't we focus on the matter at hand? Oh, the game, okay. I don't really know how this works. What am I even looking at here? You are running the client application. I am running the server, so I am the host user. I have established a connection with you. This isn't sufficient for us to play the game. Oh, okay then. Why don't we get started? John, press enter.
Mouse over the interface buttons. AH. Select. Revise. Deploy. Fernalia Registry. Grist Cache. Explore Anthenium. Alchemy Excursus. TT. Select Magic Chest. TT, zoom out. TT, drop chest. Whoa, what are you doing? Sorry, I'm just getting a feel for the controls. Is my magic chest on the roof now? Yes. I will try to be more careful next time. John, get the card. You find your missing stack fetch modus and quickly reapply it to your Silidex. You can now opt for either the stack or Q modus at any time. You toggle between your fetch modi with gleeful abandon. It looks like your dad is leaving again for more baking supplies. You're relieved to have the house to yourself again, if only for a few minutes. You just hope he doesn't notice the magic chest on the roof. Or all the shit you threw out the window, for that matter. TT. Select stuff in yard and move it back into the room. Hey, do you think you could do me a favor? Could you grab all that stuff outside my broken window and bring it in for me? I'll give it a shot. Thanks. Uh, no luck. It appears to be out of range. I'm guessing it is too far away from you, the player. TT. Select John. You cannot select a player. John abjures the meddlesome cursor. TT. Select Bunny. TT. Put the bunny back in the box. TT. Revise room. TT. Open Fernal Fer Fernalia for Fer Registry. TT. Deploy Totem Lave. John. Examine totem lathe. You don't know what the heck this thing does, but it looks neat. TT, open grist cache. It seems expanding the dimensions of your room cost us some build grist, but deploying the lathe did not appear to incur any expense. It looks like certain objects are freebies, probably to help you set up the game. Wow, okay, what do they do? I think it's up to you to find out. All I can do is drop stuff in your house and move it around, apparently. How do I move stuff around? It sounds fun. I don't think you can, as the client. You'll need to install the server application. You should have received both in separate envelopes. I'm running both on my computer right now. What? 
Did you get another envelope in the mail? No. Once you install the server and establish a connection, I'm sure you'll be able to manipulate my environment in the same manner. Are you sure you didn't get it? Oh man, I think I know where it might know where it is. Now that your room is bigger, why don't you move to the far corner? It will extend the range of the cursor and I can reach the items. Which you threw out the window for some reason? Good idea! What have you been doing in here all afternoon anyway? Ugh, I was fussing with my retarded Silidex, but I think I have it under control now. What modus do you use? I like to use trees. Oh no, that sounds so awkward. It's not exceptionally practical, but I think they are elegant. John, stand in corner. TT, deploy Crux Truder. TT, deploy Alchemeter. Why is the floor shaking? Are you dropping more stuff in my house? Yes, two more large gizmos. Sweet! What is with all these big contraptions? If I had to guess, they appear to facilitate a sort of system involving punch card based alchemy. Huh? To what end? I mean, what are we supposed to be doing in this game? That remains to be seen. Maybe you should go investigate? John, get PDA. You grab the PDA switching back to stack modus so it is readily accessible. The interface is oddly sterile. No hilarious clown wallpapers or anything like that. Oops, you meant harlequin wallpapers. The serious business application is open. It seems your dad uses it to keep tabs on various acquaintances. His fellow street performers, maybe? You guess the performing arts must be pretty serious business after all. John, install Pester Chump. This should be useful. Now you can keep tabs on your chums while you wander around the house. John, go out to balcony. Hey, I'm out on the balcony now. I am messaging from my dad's PDA. The one you threw into the yard? No, I'm telling you, it jumped out of my Silidex like a frightened weasel. What were you doing with it in the first place? I'm not sensing a lot of regard for the personal property of others. Is this how your pent-up frustration with your father manifests itself? What? No. Those were all accidents. Please take your psycho babbly elsewhere, miss. Your bathroom is a mess. Did you do that too? Oh man, see, this isn't cool. All this snooping nonsense. There's a cake in the toilet. Yes, there is. I'm tempted to clean it up for you. Okay. If that will satisfy your weird OCD complex, then go ahead. My obsessive compulsive disorder complex. Can a disorder also be a complex? In your case, probably. Sounds complicated. Anyway, I'm gonna have a look at this enormous platformy thing you put on the balcony. John, examine Alchemeter in a cautious manner. You have no idea what to do with this thing. You can't find any controls for it. Having exhausted all other possibilities, you just decide to stand on it. This isn't very cautious of you, actually. John, look through telescope. It is a clear, sunny day. Nothing out of the ordinary to report. At least, not beyond the walls of your own home. TT, grab the soiled toilet. Whoops. Whoops what? What was that noise? Is this something I should go investigate? No, I have it under control. You can keep playing with your telescope. John, investigate. Ugh. I think I can patch it up. Uh, just give me a little space. Why don't you go have a look at the Crux Truder? The what? The thing I put in your living room. John, hop down the hole. 
You jump down to the utility room. John, get sledgehammer and card. You take the sledgehammer and the capachalob card, combine the two, and quickly apply it to your strife specifus. You think it's cool that things don't always have to be a federal fucking issue. It looks like another one of your chums is pestering you on your PDA. John, answer chum. John, did you get my package? Oh, hey, no, not yet. Darn, are you sure? It was in a green box. Oh, yes, but uh, it is in my dad's car and he is still out at the store. He should be back soon. Great, so what are you up to today? I am up to my neck in this spurb stuff. TT is making a royal mess of my house. <laughs> Lol, what's spurb? Oh, it is this game. It's okay, I guess. I'm still figuring it out. Whoa, what was that? What was what? There was a loud noise outside my house. It sounded like an explosion. Wow, really? I will go outside and look. Oh man, alright, but be careful, okay? I will. John, might as well check out the crux truder. Oh hell no. You put this thing in front of the door? There's a door there? Um, yeah? I didn't see it. I just thought it fit nicely into that groove. You mean you thought it was elegant? Okay, well, what do I do with this thing? Hello? What are you doing up there now? Oh, fuck. John, examine wheel on the crux truder. When you turn the wheel, something seems to be pushing up from underneath the lid but you aren't strong enough to make the lid come off. TT, put bathtub in driveway. Connection, lost. On the tub's journey to the driveway, the connection is interrupted. John, scold TT. You can see me, right? Tell me what is wrong with this picture. Sorry, I kept losing the wireless signal. It must be the weather. I would look for a stronger signal in another part of the house, but I'd rather not risk an encounter with my mother. I battled through her cloud of gin and derision once already this evening. Haha, <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yes, cake, gestures, unfaltering love and support. Quite a road to hoe there. Though I suppose I'm complicit for not informing social services about your situation. I know. What about going outside? Uh, maybe you could catch a neighbor's signal? And that presents the same problem. Also, it's raining, remember? And dark. It's dark already? Yes, the sun has already had its way with us here on the East Coast. Its lurid gaze has moved on to younger time zones. <laughs> um, okay. John, hit Crux Truder with Sledgehammer. Need some help? T.T. Pick up Sledgehammer. What is this thing? And what is that clock counting down to? I've been looking at the game fact walkthroughs to figure out some of this stuff out. I'll hold while I read further. Okay. All of these walkthroughs are extremely short. None progress much further than this point. Weird. Well, I mean, it is a new game. True. Now that the lid is off, you will need to extrude some cruxite. John, turn wheel again. You extrude one cruxite dowel. John, get cruxite. I feel like we should be hurrying. That countdown is making me nervous. John? Oh, your PDA is trapped under the crux right now, isn't it? Anyway, it looks like you're going to need this card, too. TT. Deploy pre-punched card. John. Get card. A shard of glass is expelled from the deck and maims the Harlequin doll. 
Capatulog Fancy Harlequins. You take two fanciful Harlequins. The additional useless freight pushes your PDA to the last card. You then switch to the Q modus so you can access the PDA. More glass shrapnel flies from the deck. This thing keeps following me around. I think it's trying to talk to me or something. That is probably the kernel sprite. It apparently needs to be prototyped. Twice, actually. Whatever the hell that means. These walkthroughs are horrendously written. Hmm. Okay. Well, you were the one with the cursor, so just do whatever you think is the right thing to do. Also, fix my bathroom. TT. Drop maimed Harlequin into Colonel Sprite. The Colonel Sprite has been prototyped with the Harlequin doll. I still can't understand this thing's gobbledygook. That was only tier one prototyping. There is still another tier to the prototyping process, which for all we know advances this entity through increasingly esoteric states of linguistics. The clock is ticking. We don't have time for this asinine tomfoolery. This unmitigated poppycock? Extravagant hogwash. Okay, stop. Stop typing whatever silly thing you're typing. I'm going upstairs to the big platformy thing. The alchemeter? Try to learn the lingo. John, use pre-punched card with the alchemeter. There is no slot for a card anywhere to be found on the alchemeter. The Colonel Strite followed you upstairs. TT, explore Athenaeum. Acquiring a Cruxite Dowel seems to have populated the Athenaeum with one item. A perfectly generic object. John, Capatulog Telescope. You snatch the telescope from its tripod. Who knows, it might be useful. But more importantly, it pushes the Cruxite to the last card, making it available for tinkering. The PDA is predictably jettisoned into the yard, over the neighbor's fence. John, Put Cruxite on weird pattern on Alchemeter. You place the Cruxite dowel on the Alchemeter's small pedestal. Something is happening. You set the Alchemeter to cast three perfectly generic objects for some reason, expending a total of six units of build grist. These things look completely useless. What a waste. Out of the corner of your eye, you notice there's something in the sky. John, switch modus and use telescope to inspect sky. You switch back to stack modus and get a closer look with your telescope. Whatever it is, the Colonel Sprite seems particularly agitated about it. You're no astronomer, but its trajectory looks suspiciously head-on with your current perspective. This is a troubling development. John, high five Colonel Sprite. You figure you've left him hanging long enough. John, attempt to ingest a unit of build wrist. It is tempting because they strongly resemble rock and blue raspberry gushers. However, units of build gris are a gaming abstraction and do not seem to exist on the physical plane. There is apparently no crisis so imminent that you will deter from contemplating idiotic and frivolous, and frivolous actions. Your dad is getting home. John, what did you do with your PDA this time? I'm working on the bathroom, but we are lo running low on build gris. TT, revise bathroom.
John, run to your room and contact TT through Pester Chum. Two chums have been trying to message you. Answer chums. I'm working on the bathroom, but we are running low on build grist. Oh man, who cares about the bathroom? And now there's a meteor headed for my house. I see. Do you suppose it has anything to do with the game? I don't know. Maybe. What do I do? I think it's very likely. The walkthroughs vaguely suggest an impending threat before they end. The already poorly constructed sentences become even more curt and ambiguous, as if written hastily and with a sense of alarm. Actually, their dedication to updating the walkthrough under such circumstances is admirable. Wow. Fascinating? If the meteor is a game construct, I think the only thing to do is to proceed and try to solve the dilemma on the game's terms. Uh, try using the lathe. It says you can use the card on it, but isn't more specific than that. Okay, I'll do that. Really, it is a labor to read this dribble. If I read any more, my brain will need to be spoon-fed from a jar while it blows spit bubbles in a high chair. I think I'll write my own walkthrough. That is, after we make sure you don't die. Turn Tech Godhead began pestering ectobiologist at 1734. I heard you got the box. I hope you appreciate my heroic fatherly perseverance in getting it to you. In my rough and tumble, dirty, wife beaterly sort of way. Also, I hope you appreciate how many no talent douches had their mitts on that bunny before you. It's like a grubby baton in some huge douchebag marathon. Hey, where are you? Oh, man, the bunny was awesome, but I don't have time to talk. I'm playing suburb, and it's kind of a nightmare. TT is breaking everything in my house. Dude, I told you to steer clear of that game. And for that matter, you should probably wash your hands of flighty broads and their snarky horse shit altogether. And uh, now there's a meteor coming, and I'm not even joking about that. It's like a big asteroid or comet or something in the sky, heading right for my house. Oh, man, how big is it? Uh, I don't know. Big, I guess? I, I gotta go. We'll talk later, if I am still alive and the Earth isn't blown up. Like, the size of Texas, or just Rhode Island? They're always throwing around these geographical comparisons to give us a sense of scale like it really means anything to us, but it's like, it doesn't matter. It's always just like, wow, that's pretty fucking big. Like, Mr. President, there's a meteor coming, sir. Oh yeah, how big is it? It's the size of Texas, sir. Oh shit. Or, how big is it? It's the size of New York City, sir. Oh, shit. Sir, I'm afraid the comet is the size of your mom's dick. Oh, snap. Sir, are you familiar with Jupiter? You mean like the planet? Yeah. Well, it's that big, sir. Hmm, that sounds pretty big. I have a question. <laughs> Bad joke loading. Uh... <laughs> I have a question. Is it Jupiter? Yes, sir. Earth is literally under siege by planet fucking Jupiter. Oh, shit. Anyway, later. John, use pre-punch card on totem lathe. You slip the pre-punch card into a slot on the totem lathe. Above the tool arm deploys a configuration of chisels. Now you just need something to lathe. John, take Cruxite to totem lathe. Cursing your lack of foresight, you return to the balcony for the Cruxite dowel you left on the pedestal. You navigate the hallway, leery of your dad, who is presently puzzling over the new fixture in his hallway. The Perfect Crime You retrieve the Cruxite dowel. Dad just shrugs and heads back downstairs, presumably to do more baking. If only he knew you were hard at work saving his ass. John Use Cruxite Dowel on Totem Lathe. You clamp the Cruxite in the lathe. John. Activate Lathe. The lathe cars one totem. You take the totem. Alright, I use the lathe to make this blue shapey thing. Now I guess I take it back to the Alcamp Mixer again? Uh, hello? Tentacle therapist is no longer connected. Uh... Connection lost.
A young lady stands in her bedroom. Due to a violent storm, her house has just lost power, along with her wireless internet connection. This young man- wait, what? No, excuse me. This has severed her link to a popular video game she was playing with a young man at a critical moment. That young man is relying on this young lady to reestablish a connection somehow. This young lady named... Named... It's on the tip of your tongue. What was the name of this young lady again? Enter name. Flighty Broad. No, that wasn't it. One more time. Rose Lalonde. Examine room. Your name is Rose. As was previously mentioned, you are without electricity. Although your laptop computer still functions on battery power, you have a variety of interests. You have a passion for rather obscure literature. You enjoy creative writing and are somewhat secretive about it. You have a fondness for the bestially strange and fictitious, and sometimes dabble in psychoanalysis. You also like to knit, and your room is a bit of a mess. And on occasion, if just the right one strikes your fancy, you like to play video games with your friends. What will you do? Rose, retrieve arms from the purple box. The purple package's contents are private. No one is allowed to look inside. Rose, writhe like a flagellum and puke on your bed. Ugh, what a terrible idea. The thought alone makes you sick to your stomach. Rose, stroke writing journal and mutter, My precious! You would only resort to such an embarrassing activity while no one was watching. These journals are for your eyes only. Rose, get violin. You catalog the violin, storing it to the root card of your syllabex. Rose, play a haunting refrain on the violin. You waste approximately 40 seconds playing the violin while your friend is in peril. Nice time management skills there, sweetheart. John, tell Liv Tyler you love her before impact. Since your good-for-nothing friend is obviously not going to bail you out in time, you issue words of parting fondness to dear sweet Liv. Oh, if only Affleck could have been the one to make the final sacrifice instead of her stubborn blue-collar salt-of-the-earth father. Then she would fall into your arms for consolation, and you would be the one to make the deceased Bruce Willis proud. Rose, Capatulog Knitting Supply Bag. You get the knitting bag. It occupies the left leaf card under the violin, per the tree modus's alphabetical sorting method. K over V. Rose, look out window. Your panoramic window offers a view of your yard below, and the mausoleum housing your dead cat, Jaspers, who died when you were young. Your mom had the structure erected with a spirit of scornful irony, in response to your youthfully innocent request to hold a funeral for the animal. At least, that is how you have come to interpret the gesture in retrospect. You can also make out a silhouette of the laboratory next door, a facility which likely broadcasts a strong wireless internet signal. You may be able to connect to the signal from a different part of the house. Perhaps if you seek higher ground. Rose, get laptop. You take your laptop and prepare to make the journey through the house. This causes the tree to be unbalanced, so your Silidex auto-balances itself. Now the laptop occupies the root card, while the other two items compromise the leaves. Rose, examine book on desk. This book is absolutely indispensable for enthusiasts of your ilk, of course which there are very few. Rose, take book. You take the Grim War. 
Rose, go explore the house. You leave your bedroom. Hanging just next to your door in the hallway is a painting of an exquisite wizard. Your mother collects these awful things ironically. She must know how much you detest them, and there is no doubt in your mind she stores these dreadful things in the house to bother you. Down the hall to the right is the way to the observatory. Perhaps you will be able to connect from up there. Your mother's room is also in that direction. You will have to watch your step. Rose, tiptoe to observatory. You approach a juncture in the hallway. Beyond the juncture is the observatory. Rose, sneak by. This door leads up to the observatory. You haven't ventured up there in quite some time. Rose, go through door. The door opens to an exterior walkway, leading to the observatory entrance. You've seen less inclement weather before. Oh, the things you'll do to help out a friend. Rose, hurry up to that observatory. Try to connect. You first put your laptop down on the floor to get it situated, but removing it from the root card causes all the branches and leaves to be severed. Your items are dumped unceremoniously on the floor. Rose, see what you can observe. You're in a hurry, sure, but that doesn't mean you can't take a moment to peek through the huge telescope. You find a gap in the clouds. It seems a flurry of smaller meteorites is striking steadily overhead. You're not sure what this means, but it is somewhat disconcerting. Rose, stack laptop on grimoire to maximize elevation. You'll need every advantage you can get. Rose, access laboratory Wi-Fi network. There are several signals being broadcast from the library. From broadcasted from the laboratory. <laughs> library. Each of relatively decent strength. One of them is mysteriously and quite conveniently unsecured, requiring no password. You select the signal and reconnect to the game with John. I'm back. Hurry up and open my door! Not that it even matters, I think I'm probably dead no matter what! Patience, you still haven't used the new totem. I believe it will create the item on the punch card. So, what is it? Like, an apple or something? What good will that even do? We'll see. I've found no evidence that anyone has successfully created the item, and the content of the card appears to be variable from session to session. In one instant, it was described as an eggy-looking thing. Sick. Do we have enough of those building jewels to make it? According to an Anthonium, it is a free item. This speaks to its importance, in my view. Now, off you go. Rose, remove door from hinges. There goes the rest of your build grist. Rose, put bathtub back. You probably should have just done this in the first place. John, take totem to alchemeter. Got to get those stupid blocks out of the way first. The Colonel Sprite is getting awfully worked up about all this. Rose, remove blocks. You store the perfectly generic objects in your paraphernalia registry, potentially be deployed at a later time. John, take bite of apple. End of Act One.
Years in the future, but not many. A wayward vagabond records a stuttering step in the sun-bleached dust. Two. Hmm. Hmm. 